Coming up on Movieology, Jane Eyre. Does this movie make a great case for its existence? Or do the other 35 some odd movie adaptations milk the novel for all it's worth? Is the movie a crime of Hollywood obsession? Or worthy recognition of one of the greatest stories of 19th century literature? Find out right now on Movieology. Today's episode is brought to you by American Vision. For a chance to win a $20 gift certificate to American Vision's online store, be sure to like Movieology on Facebook, then post a comment to this video within 24 hours. American Vision has a vast array of phenomenal worldview related books and DVDs available at AmericanVision.com, so be sure to enter to win the $20 gift certificate as soon as you've watched today's episode. Welcome to Movieology, your ticket to engaging the spectacular world of film from a bedrock of biblical truth. I'm your host, Joseph Darnell. You should watch Movieology on our website, movieology.tv, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter, and write emails to info at movieology.tv. So I found Jane Eyre in one theater in the entire state of Georgia this past weekend. So I took the long drive out there and back again to bring to you this review. I want to say it was worth the hassle, but you better appreciate it. Do you? Anyway, Jane Eyre is an intriguing movie, so let's get started. Jane Eyre flees Thornfield House, where she works as a governess for the wealthy Edward Rochester. As she reflects upon God, people, and the emotions that have defined her, it is clear that the isolated and imposing residence and Mr. Rochester's coldness have sorely tested the young woman's resilience, forged years earlier when she was orphaned. She must act now decisively to secure her own future and come to terms with the past that haunts her and the terrible secret that Mr. Rochester is hiding that has been revealed. Jane Eyre stars Mia Wachakowska and Michael Fassbender in this film adaptation of Charlotte Bronte's classic novel, directed by Carrie Fuganaga. Since I had not read the book or seen other film adaptations, I was left to my own interpretation of this movie to determine what Jane Eyre was all about. So I saw this movie with a fresh perspective. After viewing it, I did research the novel and discussed it with friends who were familiar with it. I believe movies that are based on books should be viewed with the book in mind where the movie leaves details out. The movie is well made with a brilliant visual style and authenticity to the historical nature. The gothic tone of the story reigned true and the actor's performances are first rate. The script impressed me since there was so much to work with with a 600 page novel. I found in my research that the movie reduces the story to its simplest essence, nixing many side characters and subplots while still maintaining faithfulness to the major qualities of Jane's story. Naturally, details play out differently or are skipped entirely the movie captured the essence of the story in just two hours. And what, what's amazing to me is that I, a guy, felt like the time just flew by. The movie is not very spooky, contrary to what the trailer implies. There's just a surprising moment here and there, but nothing that gave me the heebie-jeebies. The movie is primarily a drama and secondarily a romance. Jane Eyre herself is a remarkable woman of literature who is faithfully depicted in the movie. Jane is like a better version of Cinderella. Where Cinderella is weak and lacks direction, Jane is strong and has clearly defined convictions and Christian standards for living. If Prince Charming had to choose, I think he would pick Jane over Cinderella, had he known more about Cinderella other than a glass slipper size. There's an air of feminism that comes out from Jane, no pun intended, but this depends on what you mean by feminism. Remember that the novel it's based on was published long before the feminist movement came along. The author, Charlotte Bronte, said herself that the story didn't mean to be interpreted this way. Grant you, the novel had some s pretty socially unacceptable ideas laid out for the 1840s and 50s, such as that marriage should be based on mutual love and compatibility, not social classes and conventionality. Whatever the case, you'll see what you want to see in the movie. Since much of the novel is trimmed out, it leaves many issues subject to interpretation, and it suggests that feminism is one of the stronger themes. However, I think it makes more sense to interpret the movie with the novel in mind, and thus to see the movie with the book's intended point of view. 
I see romanticism in the movie more so than feminism. The beauty of the romanticism is that it is held in check by Jane's faithfulness to her convictions. She knows when to draw the line for her passions, when they would lead her to breaking her moral character and harm her faithfulness to God. But this issue is also left to audience interpretation. People generally misinterpret life situations and stories in the most negative light that they can manage from their points of view. Either Jane is consistent with the novel's message of true Christianity and values, or it suggests those are unimportant when you find the love of your life and one finds fulfillment in realizing a passionate, emotionally driven life. Whatever way you look at it, the two primary worldviews in this story are romanticism and Christianity. I say Christianity is proven strong and Romanticism is proven weak. Those that disagree mainly look to how the Christians in the movie are misguided and corrupt. But not all the Christians. This is what you get from a film heavily influenced by postmodern filmmaking. The story lacks a lot of the dialogue from the book that makes the message clear. Bronte said that all the characters are Christians, and to one degree or another faithful or unfaithful to a genuine Christianity. If one knows the Jane Eyre story from other movie adaptations or the novel, there isn't any question about Jane's moral standing. As Jane tells Mr. Rochester in the novel, laws and principles are not for a time when there is no temptation. They are for such moments as this, when body and soul rise against their rigor. Jane Eyre is about limiting your passions, living by a biblical ethic, repentance, forgiveness, and acknowledging God's intended purposes for biblical-minded living. I give Jane Eyre four stars. The pros, it's engaging, thought-provoking, well-performed, and has more to it than meets the plain Jane. My one con, the movie leaves much out from the novel, leaving easily misled viewers to determine their individual interpretations. I recommend, if you are interested in worldview studies, that this is a movie you watch and mull over. It's not perfect, but it has a lot to consider and cipher. So that's it for today, folks. Remember that you can discuss this episode and all others on Movieology.tv or Facebook.com forward slash Movieology in the comments sections. What's your preferred adaptation of Jane Eyre? Tell us. And if you enjoy Movieology, be generous. Do us a favor and share it with others that you like to discuss movies with. And you can always write us your questions about movies and worldviews to info at Movieology.tv. I'm Joseph Darnell. Until next time, thank you for watching Movieology. You can catch Movieology at Movieology.tv it's that letter M. Why can't much not have the letter M in it today? Your ticket to engaging this spectacular world of the film from a lot of too many hand gestures that don't make sense. Yeah, or skir uh, skipped entirely. Skipped? Skipped entirely. Termites. Oh. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Can you still see it good? Oh, yeah. Birds fly. If there's. Over the rainbow, why then, oh, why can't I?